Watching Campus France Live, thanks a lot to be there with us today to talk about higher education in France and to discover a school, EM Normandy, and to program the MSc in Supply Chain and the MSc in International Logistics and Port Management. To talk about these programs, I'm very pleased to welcome you, Nicolas Jack. Hello. Good morning. Uh, you're the Academic Director of the MSc in Supply Chain Management and of the MSc International Logistics and Port Management. We are also uh, with you, Laurence Marie Sanchez. Hello. Good morning. You're Head of International Recruitment and we're also with Olivier Fauré, Associate Professor in Supply Chain Management and Logistics. Hello. Hello. Thanks a lot to be there with us and we are with Isabella Gentil Montoya. Hello. Hello. You're a student of the MSc, International Logistic and Port Management. So if you want to study in this field, the supply chain, the logistics and the port management are at the right place. So we are going to discover OM Normandy and its campus in Le Havre. Uh, first of all, Laurence, can you tell us a few words about OM Normandy? With pleasure. So EM Normandy is one of the top 20 uh, French business schools. It's one of the oldest because it was created in 1871 by a cotton trader in Le Havre. So uh, for those who are here with us today, uh, Le Havre is one of the biggest ports in France. And uh, so um, EM Normandy Business School has 6,000 students. Among them, 1,000 are international. We have several campuses, not only in France. So in France, we have Paris, Caen, Le Havre. In, uh, in UK, we have Oxford. We have also Dublin in Ireland and uh, Dubai. And in one year, we are going to open a campus in Boston. Okay, so new campuses that are going to be there. We have a little video to discover the school. We will be back just after that. Nicolas, we're going to focus on two MSCs, the MSC in Supply Chain and the MSC International Logistics and Port Management. Can you tell us a few words about these two programs? So uh, first, the, the Supply Chain Management Master is one of the oldest uh, at school. Um, it's designed to train the students in order for them to manage a uh, global supply chain or for a specific part of it, like procurement, for which we have also um, an external um, certification by CIPS from next year. And um, for the other one, for the international logistics and, and port management, um, this program is designed to focus on logistics hubs and most especially the um, ports and maritime sector for, for which we train the students um, Uh, let's say in a in a robust way in order for them to to optimize port terminals to manage shipping lines um, and to know how to uh, integrate the um, financial operational and sustainable aspects into it we can see pictures uh, just behind us uh, uh, from the campus uh, where the different uh, MSCs are uh, these, these two MSC the campus uh, in Le Havre why is it interesting for the students uh, they have activities uh, um, regarding uh, the ports of uh, Le Havre yeah during the semester they, they they visit the ports so the container terminal is the main part of the port. So we start by this kind of uh, activity. Uh, and um, I'm also working as a consultant in the, in the cruise sector. So we have access to the cruise terminal so we can visit the, the cruise ships as well as uh, all the terminal like the ferry terminal. And I used to work also. And the, um, 
Abu Master office and all the stakeholders involved in the port so they can understand how is it organized and which part they may want to, to work with. We know that sometimes that security on the port can be really uh, hard. Uh, you yeah. have the, your opening, you can have the student to directly go inside. Yeah, because in, in, the, in the port of Lohar, I'm working as a port facility security officer. So security is my, uh, my part, let's say. So yeah, I have the, all the access for that. And then also they have to comply with certain uh, international regulation as well as the French regulations. But it's not so complicated for me to to get access to this kind of uh, facilities. Mm, it's really interesting because when you're choosing a, a program dedicated to all this question, uh, the fact of uh, being able to visit and to uh, not work, but uh, to see uh, how people work on this kind of site is really interesting. Is it a 100% English program? Yes, it is. And uh, uh, we're going to talk in a, in a few minutes about the different courses that you offer. But before that, we are with you, Isabella, one of the students of the MSc International Logistics and Port Management. Um, can you tell us a few words about you, where you're from, and why did you decide to choose uh, to study at EM Normandie? Sure. I'm from Colombia, from Barranquilla. Um, I chose the school because I wanted to pursue a master's in um, logistics, especially related to ports operations. And through my research, I discovered um, the logistics program offered by, by the school, which aligns perfectly with my professional aspirations. And well, also the school is, well, it has a triple crown or triple accreditation, and just 1% of the business schools in the world has it. So this can prove the commitment of the institution by providing uh, a high quality education. And well, the campus is well located. Um, we have one of the major sports in France in terms of like containers and cargo flow just nearby. So this provides a hands on learning approach. So yeah, that's why I decided EM Normandy, especially the Leap campus. Thanks a lot. Uh, Laurence, it's uh, really interesting. The, she was talking about the triple accreditations. What are the different recognitions of the school? So we are recognized by ACSB, Equis, and IMBA, which is a part of the Triple Crown. Also, uh, we have uh, the uh, welcome, uh, bienvenue en France, the label delivered by Campus Trans in order to recognize how well we treat our international students. And uh, specifically talking about this program, uh, first, the program are MSc, so they are recognized by the Conférence de Grandes Écoles, but not only, they are also uh, recognized by the Ministry of Higher Education as a, a degree of uh, five years after high school, so back plus five, as we say in French. And so this is really important. Moreover, I would like to stress on what Nicolas said about the CIPS certification, which is uh, the professional certification, which is really interesting for future professionals uh, in order to search for a job because this is a real recognition for them. Nicolas, what are the different classes that you're offering these two MSCs? So in the first semester, the, these two programs, the uh, supply chain and the port management, are together because we we think that the the students should get enough um, fundamentals about how the supply chain is organized in terms of operation quality management we have procurement we have also um, a big part about sustainability how to calculate carbon footprint for our logistics company how to improve that in the view also of to maintain the financial results as well as the operational level and the quality of service. And um, so these are the main pillars of the first semester. Uh, at the end of this first semester, the students will have a business competition. So they will work for a real company that we, we found uh, at school. Um, and this company, this is a logistics company, has a problem. They don't have the time to deal with it and they let's say they transfer this problem to, to the students so they can answer to that. So it could be, for instance, last year they work on uh, uh, optimize the supplier panels and uh, how to maybe remove to add supplies to the a company uh, uh, portfolio. And the other one was to, to work for a company near Paris uh, that is in charge of the distribution of uh, small parcels 
And because we have the Olapin Games uh, coming in in the summer, their, their logistics plan are um, disturbed because of the restrictions it could uh, create. So the students were in charge to define the proper plan B for this uh, event so they, this company can maintain its quality of service and even maybe um, find other customers thanks to this level of service. That was mm. pretty, pretty interesting. So that's for the first semester. Second semester, then the these two uh, programs uh, go in separate ways, so supply chain and port management. So for supply chain, the second semester is uh, cons focused on three main things. The um, demand planning, the production systems, and the supply planning. Around this, we have customer relationship management. We have soft skill development for the students so they can be ready for any job interviews. And we have also business games. They will have two business games. One is about a, a company selling a, a orange juice. And this company has problems and they have to uh, improve their financial results as well as operation level. Um, and the other one is focused on sustainability. So it's just to put in, in real what we, we learn in the first semester on, on this topic. So a company selling coffee and chocolate has a problem of uh, maintaining its level of service with sustainability uh, problems like regulations. Mm. And they have to find the right balance between um, this regulation and maintaining their financial result and the highest level. So that's the the main uh, the main things to do during this second semester of supply chain. And for the port management on the other side, the courses are focused on, on transportation. So mainly maritime, but also air, rail and road transport. Because maritime is just one part of the the, the supply chain, okay? And they have uh, also dedicated courses on the port economics and performances, as well as shipping line management, um, risk and business development on shipping lines. Mm. So it's a really complete, um, there are two really complete programs. Uh, and what we can see, um, Olivier Fauré, is that in, in the different uh, uh, courses, you offer both technical and theoretical knowledge, but also a practical point of view. That's the case in the different courses that you're teaching. Yes, definitely. We That's something very important for us is to, to provide both elements. Uh, first, the, as Nicola said, the aim is to, to, uh, to train students to be able to take a managerial uh, position within different companies they're going to work with. Uh, that's the first one. To do so, they need a strong theoretical background first, but also uh, able to uh, to develop soft skills like managing uh, people, like working in groups, uh, but also see and um, to combine those two in order to solve issues and to see how to optimize transportation chain. So yeah, most of the lecture, all the lecture are very dedicated on this element to see how, um, how to give both theoretical aspect, but also yeah, to train people, uh, students, and to give them uh, to practice, to, to increase the, level, the number of hours of practice. That's very important for us to do and for students. Mm. Uh, Nicola, who are the people teaching in front of the different students? Uh, as we understood earlier, you're all still working as a professional in this field and you're also teaching yes. and uh, being the academic director. Is it the case for uh, no. most of the teachers? No, no, let's say... Um quite have a special uh, status on, on this point. But let's say we have 70% of uh, internal teachers in the program uh, who are PhD, mm -hmm. and we have 30% of uh, professional. They are uh, working for logistics company and they are teaching in this program for years. Uh, what I didn't mention is that I was a student of this program 13 already, 13 years ago. And I had some of this teacher already at that okay. time. 
So they are they, they prove their um, their performance and uh, the students are very satisfied. So the professionals will be more involved in the second semester when we get when we get to more specialized courses. Whereas the first semester is more on the on the faculty. Uh, and after that, uh, it is the end of the MSc. Is it a one year program or do they have to do, for instance, internships? Uh, how is it working? So the um, First semester is from uh, September to uh, December, and the, the spring semester is January to April. At the end of April, they have to find an internship for which we can, of course, uh, help, and we uh, forward a lot of offers thanks to our alumni network as well as our professionals uh, involved in the program. And the uh, the duration of the internship is four months, and they have also during that time. The, the thesis, the, the final dissertation to write and to submit and to defend already uh, around the June and July. And at the end of the, the year, they will be graduated. Isabella, uh, you're one of the students of the MSc International Logistics and Port Management. From all the different experiences and courses that you already have had the opportunity to follow, uh, can you share what moment that you really enjoyed? Sure. Well, first, I can affirm that my time at the university has been really enjoyable um, with each activity presenting its own unique um, challenges. Um, there's a few, actually. I can start with the fact of having international professors. Um, they offered a diverse perspectives and insights that, shaped, um, that are shaped by their cultural backgrounds and experiences that um, also enrich the classroom discussions and also fosters like a global mindset among the students. And well, I can mention actually two uh, experience in particular. Um, as Nicola mentioned before, uh, it was the, the business competition uh, where we collaborate with a company providing a logistic solution for uh, package delivery during um, the Olympic Games. I think it was a great experience where uh, we had like a lot of uh, contact with the company, with the managers, and it was a teamwork. And I also um, can mention um, one one port visit that we we had, well situated near the port of Le Havre. Uh, we we had the opportunity to get to know the terminal. Um, gain like insights into its operations. Additionally, we had the privilege to meet like meeting the dockers who provided valuable um, explanations about the functions of the cranes. So yeah, I believe that these practical experiences are helpful to understand better what we um, learn in class, offering us like a deeper um, understanding of the concepts and of course enriching our overall immersive experience. That's really interesting. Nicola, and in the different MSc, do you offer specializations or do you offer a very uh, general point of view on these two fields? Um, the, the specialization is mostly in the second semester of the, the, the year. So the, the candidates can hope for a two years um, program. So they will be Master of Science Year 1, Master of Science Year 2. I'm in charge of the second year only. During the first year, they will get more general knowledge on management, accountability, um, as well as marketing, mm. the, 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 the fundamentals of everything, all the topics that we can learn in a business school. Whereas in the second year, that's the year of specialization, and most especially the second semester of it, mm. where we get into what they, they want to become. Mm. Uh, but the MSc, just to make sure, the, these two MSc are two one-year program that you can follow after one year of a very general uh, organization. Often you follow the two years program or just one year, and if you follow one year, it's the last of the two. Okay. Depends on your level of education. Yeah, mm. depends on that. And that's really interesting because we're going to talk uh, about admissions with you, Laurent. So <laughs> let's talk about that. Um, what background do you require to apply to the MSc's? So there is no specific background, but at least a, a very uh, professional uh, project behind. Uh, we have sometimes people coming from another field. 
So uh, people coming from an engineering background, they wanted to get specialized in supply chain. Uh, more and more companies are looking for uh, supply chain managers because they have the company to uh, make um, be, more, be more profitable, uh, save money, which is really important today. Um, so we look uh, really at the motivation. It's really important. And um, apart from that, I was uh, saying that depending on your level of education, you can access to a one year track or two year track. So let's say if you have a bachelor, a three year bachelor degree, you have to go for the two year track. So as Nicolas said, the first year will be a fundamental year. And the second year you will have to go to attend the, the format and the classes that uh, Nicolas mentioned to you. Um, if you have a four year bachelor degree, uh, you can directly uh, go to the last year with the MSc. Uh, part. What are the different steps to apply? Do you have to uh, write uh, recommendation letters or stuff like that? Do you have interviews? How does it work for the students? So it's not like very extraordinary at EM Normandie, but uh, yes, it's an online application. We have a specific uh, platform, which is called johnemnormandie.com. And on the platform, you can uh, submit your resume. You have to enter your uh, personal details. We don't have covering letters. We prefer to ask questions because uh, we want the student to really think about the questions we can use for any school. We want to focus on their skills. And uh, so they have to uh, upload the transcripts. Uh, if they have recommendation letters, it's a plus. So uh, anything that they can um, they can upload in order to for us to know more about themselves, of course, uh, passport and so forth. And uh, after that, uh, they have um, to pay uh, admission fee, which is uh, 50 euros in order to submit the application. And after that, the admission team is going to review the file and contact them to schedule the interview with the professor from the program mm. to, uh, to, to test out the motivation and so forth. And um, also I have to mention, because I, I guess some students may be interested in the scholarship. Uh, first of all, we have a merit-based scholarship. So in the application form, it's really important because many students, they ask for the scholarship and they don't answer. <laughs> at the motivation question regarding the scholarship. They have to explain why they think they deserve a scholarship. Not only uh, I think I deserve a scholarship because sometimes we have sentences like this. So they so have to uh, show that they are outstanding students. They have a true motivation. And uh, also um, I have to mention that we have an early bird scholarship if they submit the application before uh, before uh, March 17th. So for both scholarships, you can get 10% off on the total tuition fees. So maximum would be 20%. Uh, percent. Um, Olivier, how uh, you're one of the professors of the in supply chain management logistics. Do, do, do you um, conduct some of the interviews? I, I used to, yeah, sometimes we used to, we, are, we, we participate to the, to the selection of students, yes. Yeah, it's uh, it's important for us to do so because it's an, also an, an opportunity for us to uh, to meet the to meet our students, um, and to uh, to make sure that the students that integrate the programs have the the skills to uh, to do so and that they are able to do um, to follow the lecture, but they also have the motivation for that, um, and uh, yeah, so we we do we do so yes definitely. What kind of questions do you ask to know their motivation and to be sure that uh, they are um, the, 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 they can follow the program? Well, it's uh, it's very general. I mean, it depends. Usually, it depends also on the person you have in front of you. But uh, one of the question I ask sometimes is, "What is your knowledge about um, transportation? I mean, the maritime transportation? What did?" You about that to see if the person we have in front of us has some um, some culture have some uh, interest that goes beyond just this basic uh, that um, basic elements uh, and we also see with the person I mean if she had any uh, any professional um, goal and if so what is what is uh, him I mean uh, how she perceive uh, how the student uh, perceive itself in itself within uh, in her and um, that's very uh, element regarding both the potential culture he or she may have, but also about the personality and um, yeah, this personality. 
Um, Nicola, do you think that it's important for your future students to already have a great idea and a good idea of what they want to do after professionally? Or is it possible to apply without being very sure of uh, the exact field we want to study in? Yeah, they, they can determine their, their future job during the year. What we ask uh, during these uh, interviews uh, is that the student can have a general idea on which part of the supply chain they want to go. Is that more on the procurement side? Is it more on the operational side? Is it more on the um, transport hubs to manage it? Or yeah, this is because they will ask, they will be asked to, to choose a supply chain or port management. But after that, the, the exact job title, no, they, mm -hmm. they have the, the, the full year for deciding like that. No, no problem at all. Isabella, how did it go for you, the application process, and what would be your advice for the uh, students or maybe future students of UM Normandy watching us today? Sure. Actually, my process was really smoothy. The admission um, center was really uh, open, always willing to help to answer my questions. I applied through the platform, and after that, um, they scheduled um, an interview uh, in my case was with one of our uh, professors and yeah she asked me a lot about well about me about my experience about the knowledge um, that I had regarding the industry and after that uh, she gave me a feedback and uh, yeah that was pretty pretty old it was really fast really smoothly and actually nothing complicated um, my advice for future students will be to um, have clear what 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 they really want to do if they really want to uh, get into this industry, because well, not just the logistics; it can also um, well be related with other master's degree. Because um, I think it's a decision; it's a career decision that will um, make an, an impact in in you and in the industry. So, yeah. Uh, basically have in like have clear what you want um, your plan and also what you want to do after um, ending the master's degree and there you were admitted uh, did you have some help from the school for all the different uh, uh, procedures to come to France how was it for you yes uh, they provide us a guide um, for all the process that we need to to do um, and also they provide a, like a, a, a guide with all the costs that we need to have in mind. So these help us also to um, get organized in um, an economic or financial way. So that's uh, really important when we are discovering a new uh, city and a new school. And how would you describe the student life in Le Havre? How is it? Actually, I think it's really nice. It's a student um, city uh, where you have the chance to meet people and students from all around the world with different backgrounds, different experience. Um, you just not um, listen to French. You listen a lot of languages uh, where you had the chance to learn about them, to learn about um, the different countries. So I think it's a really multicultural city. And also the city hosts a lot of uh, activities such as festivals, exhibitions that also enrich our experience here in the city and in the country. And you have the chance to get to know a, a bit more of the cultural um, aspects. Um, Laurence, it's your job, it's the job of your team to help uh, to have a good integration in France and in uh, the campus of Le Havre. How, how do you do that? So we have uh, one uh, person per uh, area, uh, geographical area. So one person for, let's say, Asia, one person for Africa, one person for Latin America and so forth. So we have a whole team. Um, so they are dedicated. They know what are the, um, the expectations of the students, depending on the country they are coming from. Because depending on your country, you don't have the same view, the same expectations. So it's important to uh, discuss with them a lot. Uh, they exchange on WhatsApp very regularly. They can ask the question they, they need. We organize some webinars in order to uh, 
uh, focus some, uh, on the housing, how to uh, get the visa um, and so forth. So uh, we uh, deal uh, closely with the students. We help them a lot. So uh, when they have an interview with the Campus France uh, office, uh, we help them how to prepare it and uh, we tell them uh, what they need to, uh, to do. Also, when they got admission, they are asked to um, pay a first uh, deposit in order to secure the seat. When this is done, uh, we are going to send them an admission letter stating that we are waiting for them. And this is this very specific document that they have to submit in their file for the visa. We're going to talk about the professional integration during and after the different MSc. If you still have questions, you can uh, keep on asking them on the different chat sections of Campus France. Um, you were explaining, Nicolas, that they have a one uh, experience, one internship at the end of the MSc. How does it work? How long does it last? Where can they uh, do it? And how do you help them to find an opportunity? Three questions in one. Yeah, so the internship can start uh, from early May and must be uh, terminated at the end of the year, so uh, last day of December. But uh, during this period of uh, seven months, they have only four months to do uh, in terms of internship, okay? So they, they can find by themselves, that's one part. The other part is from the alumni network of the school. We have thousand because of the 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 age of the our school. We have a lot of uh, alumni all around the world, uh, and some are in the uh, logistics sector. Do you have examples of what they can do uh, as internships? Yeah. So if you are uh, in the supply chain management uh, master, you can uh, be uh, for internship. Uh, you can be a uh, purchasing assistant, demand assistant. You can be um, cost cost controller assistant but on logistics operation and the other side if you are in the um, port management uh, master you can work because this is for many students for shipping lines um, containerized shipping lines of so CMACGM, MSG etc so you can become um, cargo flow officer area manager so you manage uh, a specific line itinerary on the global network of the, the shipping line and you optimize the, the capacity and how many containers you can put on board in order to optimize, of course, the cost all over the, the route. And how does it go for the students after graduating? Do they easily find opportunities? Yes, we have an employability rate of 97% uh, among these two programs. Um, so most are of uh, graduate students uh, remain in the logistics sector. Some are moving to more financial uh, aspiration, let's say, uh, to become cost controller, to become a financial analyst, but on logistics operation because they have a global view on, on it. And um, the average salary for uh, our students, uh, for, or for alumni, sorry, uh, 10 years later is uh, between 65 and 70,000 euros per mm, year. So that's uh, a good salary, but I imagine that depending on the countries are working yeah, on. Yeah. That's, uh, so yeah. let's say yeah. half, Triple. half of our cohort will go abroad and half will stay in Europe. Mm. And you were talking about the alumni network. Um, it's interesting because the brand uh, OM Normandy Business School in these different fields is pretty really known. Yeah, yeah, or um, we have um, alumni everywhere, let's say, and uh, they are providing a lot of offers to our uh, portfolio. And the, um, we have also something that I didn't mention is uh, the, uh, the organization of job fairs at school that helps students to discuss with companies, with professionals, even if they don't find a job directly with these people. So they can they can uh, train on their motivations and uh, how they should uh, organize their speech. And we have also a career path dedicated to this uh, improvement of soft skills during the both semester, actually. So it's a pretty good program to enter uh, with a, a good condition in the professional world, to conclude. Uh, thanks a lot, uh, maybe Isabella, to conclude. Um, 
can you give us a, a piece of advice for the people watching us today who wish to come to France to study? What would you have asked them to do? I think that uh, most of the time we get afraid of getting out of our comfort zone. Um, and of course, leaving home, leaving our family, um, our culture. But I think it's a great challenge and in which I, I think not all the people um, feels ready to give that step further. However, we need to take the risk, no risk, no story, just go for it. Um, I think it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. And yeah, it's, it's you become more open-minded when you go out of your comfort zone, you explore different uh, cultures, different countries, and you interact with uh, people in a multicultural way. So my advice is to take to take the risk. Take the risk. Uh, that's a, a good way to conclude this live session. Thanks a lot, Isabella, for this advice, and thanks to you, Nicola, Laurence, and Olivier for having me with us today. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you very much for having watched us. If you still have questions or if you want to begin your admission process, the website that you can visit of them Normandie. See you soon. Campus France Live. <laughs>